What's going on, everyone? It's Taylor with Apex Hosting, and today we're going to jump into learning more about the Mythic Mobs Minecraft plugin. Mythic Mobs is going to give you the opportunity to create your own monsters with skills, armor, weapons, enchantments, and more, leaving everything up to your imagination and what you might want to add to your game. But before we get into the gameplay and how to use it, let's first go over how to install it onto your server. Head to Mythic Mobs on Spigot and then click the Download Now button in the top right. And on the next page, make sure to select the free version on the left hand side. Save this file somewhere you can get to to use in just a minute. As you can see, there is of course also a paid premium version of the mod that might come in handy if you're looking for more control over the features or the mod itself. This also opens up the option for support from their community. This is of course always an option, but today I'm going to be going over the free version. Next, you're going to head towards your Apex server panel, stop the server, and make sure you're running a plugin compatible server like Paper or Spigot. After that, click FTP file access near the top left, log in, and then head to the plugins folder, and then click upload in the top left corner. Drag and drop the Mythic Mobs file into the upload area, and once this reaches 100%, you can use your server name at the top of the page to return to the main panel and restart the server. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're a server operator to use the plugin. Now that you've done that, we can jump into some of the new additions and some of the things that you're going to be able to add yourself. First, let's go over how to create your own. While I am going to go over an easy creature to make today, you can also check out the official wiki to learn more about it or find other options. The first part of the mob creation is to set up weapons, armor, and anything else you might want. This can become a bit complicated the more you add aspects to it, such as attributes, enchantments, and lore. You are also going to want to keep track of the name that you call this custom item, since you're going to need it later for the mob creation progress. Head towards your FTP file access and log in, and then head to the Plugins, Mythic Mobs, and Items pathway. Once you're there, press New File in the top left corner and name it whatever you might want with YML at the end, and then you can enter your desired settings for the new item in the editor, copying the settings from the example items YML if you need a template. When you're done, press save at the top and head back into the main folder. After you're done setting up weapons and armor, you might want to add item drops. This is also relatively straightforward since all that's required is material IDs and a minimum or maximum number of them to appear. While you're inside that Mythic Mobs directory, find and enter the Drop Tables folder, and then click New File and name it anything you want as long as you put YML at the end. Just like before, you can type in your desired settings or use the settings in Example Drop Tables as a reference for a template. Once you've done this, press Save and return to the main folder again. Now a little more technical than the other settings, setting up skills for mobs requires knowledge of in-game aspects. For example, values such as at target means the creature will do an action against the player. Again, from the Mythic Mobs directory, find the skills folder this time, and then click on new file and in the same way, name it anything you want, but put YML at the end. Enter those desired settings or use that template from the example skills YML file. And once you're done, press save and return to the main directory again. Now, as for the actual creation of your new mob, this is going to combine everything you've done so far, along with tweaking its health, damage output, character type, and more. For this process, I strongly recommend using an example file as a template or using the wiki page for additional details. Head into the mobs folder from the main Mythic Mobs directory and then press new file and name it with YML at the end. And then here, just like the rest, enter your desired settings or use an example as a template. When you're finished setting up the mob, you can click save at the top, and this time you can return to the main panel and restart the server to load up any of the new mobs. Now, if you're wanting this newly created mob to naturally spawn into the Minecraft world, you're going to want to head back into the Mythic Mobs directory and enter the random spawns folder. Press new file and create a new YML file, and then copy and paste the template from example random spawns, replacing the mob with the mob that you created. Once you're done, click save and return to the main panel and restart the server one more time. 
Of course, once you make your own, you might come across them just like any other mob in the world, but there are a few example mobs that you won't have to make that are there by default. The first mob is called a Skeletal Knight. This creature has full iron equipment, including armor, a sword, and a shield. Its features resemble a weather skeleton, but it has increased health and damage, and when you slay them, you might be rewarded with gold nuggets. Skeletal Knights do naturally spawn in the world, but server owners can also forcibly summon it by using the MM Mobs Spawn Skeletal Knight command in chat. Another example mob is an extremely large slime called Angry Sludge. This creature has a lot of health and it can even poison players nearby with its special skill. You're not going to get any extras from killing this one and it's more there for just the thrill of the fight. And unlike the Skeletal Knight, this one does not spawn naturally and you'll have to use the MM Mobs Spawn Angry Sludge command. Now besides these standard mobs, there is also a boss-like one provided. This dangerous creature is known as the Skeleton King, which has powerful skills and attacks. These mobs also cannot naturally spawn, meaning you'll have to run the command to encounter them. But once you're engaged in combat, it'll send chat messages, summon minions, and launch you into the air occasionally. Due to the plugin's design, only operators should be able to use it, but if you want to alter that, you can add the Mythic Mobs Admin Permission node to their account. This is done by using Luck Perms or any similar plugin to manage. Now, before we jump into the common issues, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our future videos. If you're having issues finding example or custom mobs in the world, then head towards the random spawns folder in the FTP panel. Specifically, the chance and world settings are the ones you're going to want to focus on. The first one allows you to enter a range from 0 to 1, and as for the other option, you might not have your world's name in it. If you have more than one world, they can be separated with a comma, and if you're having trouble finding the map's name, either review your FTP directory or check the world area in the panel. If your mob isn't dropping items, double check to make sure you've successfully created the drop tables config and implemented it into the mobs document. Remember, you have to keep track of the names you assign to the loot drop since it's assigned to the mob settings. This plugin is great for adding in these custom mobs, but with that comes configuration, so make sure to check out the official wiki page, or if you want a more in-depth video on making custom mobs, let me know in the comments down below. Besides that, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.